and welcome to Suron South's video on how to change the brake discs on a Suron Light B. In this video, we will show you how to replace the rear brake disc and the front brake disc. To remove the rear wheel, we will need to remove the main chain. Begin by loosening the rear axle using a 6mm hex drive on the brake disc side and a 17mm socket on the other. We now need to loosen the chain before removing. Use a 10mm spanner to undo the locking nut and then undo the bolt to loosen the chain. Do this both sides. Use a pair of pliers and a pick tool to remove the chain clip and disconnect the chain. If your chain has O-rings, make sure not to lose these. Put the chain connector back together and store in a safe place while we do the rest of the work. Remove the chain from the sprocket to allow us to remove the wheel. Undo the two caliper bolts using a 5mm socket driver. Lift the caliper away and let it hang beside the bike. Push the rear axle through and remove it and the two spacer blocks from the bike. Lift the wheel clear, watching that the caliper mount doesn't fall onto your workbench, like what happened here. We are removing the rear wheel bushings here because they can fall out of the wheel and get lost easily. Voice of experience. We are using a tire press to hold our wheel here, but you can use a worktop. Using a Torx bit, undo the bolts holding the disc in place. These are held in place with threadlock, so require a little effort to undo. Once the bolts are out, remove the disc. We are going to replace the same disc in this video as the bike is brand new with zero miles on it. The disc that you fit has an arrow on it to indicate the direction of rotation. Make sure that it is facing the correct way. Before you start fixing the disc in place, put some thread lock onto the screws. Loosely fit the bolts into the holes then tighten in an opposing pattern, as shown here. Nip these up tight. Fit the rear bushings back into the wheel. The thicker bushing goes into the sprocket side. The thinner bushing goes into the brake disc side. To fit the rear wheel back in the bike, you need to align the wheel with the caliper mount. The caliper mount has a small channel that lines up with a ridge on the swing arm. Once aligned, push the rear axle through, not forgetting the spacer. Fit the other spacer on the sprocket side. Replace the axle nut and hand tighten for now. Push the wheel up to the chain tension bolts and tighten the rear axle so that it does not move as we fit the chain back on. We now need to reattach the caliper. Fit the caliper in place. Then, with the brakes held on, tighten up the caliper bolts. This ensures that the caliper is aligned well with the brake disc. If the brakes feel particularly spongy, then it is a sign that there might be air bubbles in the system and might need bleeding. We will cover this in another video. Torque up the caliper bolts to 12 newton meters using a torque wrench. Fit the chain around the rear sprocket and connect with the link that you put aside earlier. Make sure that the O-rings are in the correct place, if your chain has them. 
If you are unable to connect the chain, loosen the tension bolts more. Once the chain is connected, tension back up the chain using the bolts on both sides. Make sure that the recess on the spacers lines up with the same marking on the chassis on each side of the bike. This ensures that the wheel and the sprocket are aligned correctly. Don't forget to tighten the locking nut. We now need to tighten up the rear axle and check the torque setting. A spanner can be wedged into the chain to stop the wheel rotating whilst you tighten and torque up the axle nut to 50 to 55 newton meters. The back brake is now complete. Let's move to the front. To remove the front brake disc, first we need to remove the wheel. We will be fitting a Magura Storm 203 disc on this bike. We will be doing this on the DNM front forks. If your forks are different, such as RST or Fast Ace, then this process may be slightly different. Begin by loosening the clamps that hold the axle. Do this on both sides. Next, loosen and remove the front axle end cap. Texan Gunslinger tool skills optional. Do this on both sides also. We need to push the front axle through the wheel and out the other side. To do this, we will use a ratchet extension and push the axle through. Using a Torx bit, undo the bolts holding the disc in place. These are held in place with thread lock, so require a little effort to undo. Once the bolts are out, remove the disc. The front wheel has two spacer hubcaps. These are held in with a rubber o-ring and may fall out as you are doing this. If that happens, gently press it back in place, making sure not to trap or pinch the o-ring. Offer up the new disc to the wheel, ensuring that the rotation direction mark is facing the correct way. On this disc, we are using new Magura bolts that have a thread locking compound already on them. If you are using old bolts, you may need to put thread lock on before reinstalling them. Loosely fit the bolts into the holes, then tighten in an opposing pattern as shown here. Nip these up tight. We will now fit the wheel back into the forks, being careful to align with the brake caliper. At this point, the front spacers may get knocked off. Don't worry, just push fit them back in carefully as we mentioned earlier. Push the axle all the way through and replace the end caps and tighten. Check that the front axle is torqued up to 20 to 25 Newton meters. Tighten up the axle clamps. Tighten one bolt, then its neighbor, then the first, and then maybe the second one again. This is because you will be able to turn them a fraction more each time. Torque these up to 10 newton meters. Again, do one bolt, then its neighbor, and back and forth a few times. Do the same on the other side. Give the wheel a spin to make sure that the wheel is aligned with the caliper correctly. You can always loosen the caliper and squeeze the brake lever as we did with the rear wheel. 
congratulations, you have changed your brake discs. 